Welcome back to the Choice Podcast, and uh, this week, yes, we're going to be talking about preseason preparations. Okay. Okay. Preseason okay. preparations. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, and what, what does that include? A little bit of everything. Whether okay. like we always get our plots set up, we start getting all of our gear ready. We don't really pack quite yet, just depending on the hunt. Um, I, all, all of the I fun stuff. So is this preseason? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Is this preseason for the fall or is this yeah, leading into the summer stuff? fall? Okay. Oh, okay. It's just kind of getting ready for the rest of the year because we're in okay. that we're in that period now where we got our plots in. We're waiting yeah. for mm-hmm. well, there, well there's, our clovers coming up. A lot of people are planting now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. that's true. Yep. So let's jump right into it. We'll start off with plots. See, because right. here's what they do to us. They don't tell us. No. They no. just say, "All right, be here at this time." We want a surprise. Mm-hmm. It has to be. It has to be a surprise. Oh, you, you, so you, yeah. impromptu. Yeah. Impromptu. They want exactly. to wow. here. They don't exactly. know what. You know, exactly. They don't want to oh, give us time to I look up answers. Fail at this. Oh. I mean, we won't have time to go look on YouTube for any answers. No, I it's can't Google. Be horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be horrible. We're screwed. They're not that <laughs> hard. Don't worry. Okay. 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 So the first one's from Steve Kamer. What do you plant? Oh. In your food plots. Food in our plots, especially being Washington and back in Illinois. Okay. Well. We know back, back home in Illinois, we have very well-established clover, mm-hmm. you know, um, white and red clovers. Um, we like them because, one, you plant it, and as long as you take care of it and you mow it, uh, you have it for multiple years. Plus, you have a good springtime feed for when the does are lactating. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We keep them very, new, you, you know, all very the healthy. The herd, it, is, yeah. it, the herd benefits, and all the wildlife benefits from it. Yeah. All year long, you have pollination. You have your bugs, your, your all, all your your birds, mm-hmm. your turkeys. They all love that. So and it keeps them all healthy. Yeah, yeah. it keeps everything healthy. You know, it, you, so many people think you're putting a plot just to kill an animal, but the the, the benefits of all wildlife are there. Mm-hmm. And out west now, of course, we're using a lot more sandpoint, which we're still learning a lot about. Yeah, we're still we, learning a lot about that. This is our right second now. year well, having the sandpoint yep. now. And Recology put, put together our clover blends. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yep. So they, they, they gave us the, the western mixture, which yep. really does work just because, one, we deal with something that we didn't really deal with back home in Illinois. Back mm-hmm. I shouldn't say home anymore, but back in Illinois, and that was, you know, drought. Mm-hmm. That's true. Real right. sandy, you know, where a lot of people and down elevation. south. Yeah, yeah, elevation. There's yeah, a, a there's a whole difference. lot of variables that right. that you you know. And here we're just planting stuff just to keep hab, keep good habitat for all the animals. Absolutely. Whether we're hunting it or not, I mean, it's just it's just giving them you know forage and food all year long. So last year's first year, we put in a plot here in our meadow, and we put in the clover blend and then the sandpoint. And last year, the sandpoint came up, but not great. But we had heard that the second year, it was going to be better for us. Mm-hmm. So we've already seen it down there. And actually, we've already have elk and deer and mm-hmm. everything else going through that. And cattle. Already. And that wasn't a cow track. Yeah. We had cattle in there. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> We're feeding everyone. There's no, we did, there's we no did pictures learn, of them, though. I was say. We did learn last fall that elk go through plots a lot faster than whitetails. Yes, do. they do. They destroy them a, a lot, lot quicker. faster. Yeah. A yeah. lot <laughs> faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, what's cool is all the wildlife is benefiting from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I, I think the best thing, like you were asking, you know, take the time, do do your soil tam- your, your soil samples. Soil samples. You know, get you, get everything, your pH levels, get everything as best as you can. You know, it, it's a financial commitment. Yeah, absolutely. And a time commitment, you know, to make them good. But all you're doing is benefiting everything that's in and around your area. You're making a better habitat for all the wildlife. Right. Yes. It's about conservation. It yep. really is. It's Absolutely. just another step of conservation. And like you just said, Ralph, dollar-wise, it's a commitment because a lot of soils are not going to be perfect pH. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to add lime or do something lime else to it to else. get yep. it going. And those are all expenses that you got to add. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So was that a, okay? Was that a yeah, good answer? Yeah, that's okay, answer. we did okay. Okay, okay. Good. all right, just check. Don't want to fail. No. Okay. No, you kind of touched on it. But the next person asked, Mr. Richard, asked, what's the best clover to use, like you were saying earlier? Yeah, you you know, your whites and your reds, your crimson. I I mean, there's a lot. You know, the other thing, too, is understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, like you throw some chicory in, you you know, we're mixing some sandfoin. We're doing all of these blends that we know will handle the drier situation that we have here. Yeah. Know your area. And, you know, just like back in Illinois, we watched the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we wanted to do all of our ground prep and everything. 
and get every get seed in when we knew yeah. we had moisture coming. Well, that was like this year, even down below out here out west. Right. We got we got word that there's a cool. storm coming in. We we, we, we all ran down the hill, dropped there. everything, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and got just, it planted. And yeah. I don't know if you guys have been down there. We went down there yesterday, and oh my gosh, the sandpoint's coming yeah. up good. The good. clover's That's everywhere. Cool. It's I've seen crazy. the clover, but not That's the sandpoint awesome. yet. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's it looks good. good. It is good. green down That's there. So yeah, cool. but we've had rain that day, like right after we planted it all. We all went down there and ran buggies and everything to get it done. But yeah. And thanks to Chase for turning us on to sand Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So to continue on the plots and everything else, yep. what is the process out west compared to Illinois to plant everything? Is there a difference? Is there kind of the same? I don't know. We go through it every year, but what have you what have you realized the biggest differences are? Rocks. Rocks. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Rocks here. Oh, we, yeah. live, we live out west at 7,600 feet. Yes. So, I mean, we're up high elevation, and so that's going to – you know, one thing, obviously we're in a mountain, so it's rocks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't have the black, black soil up top here like we did in mm-hmm. Illinois. It's By any dry means, it's dry, rock. sandy, and rock. Mm-hmm. Now down in our meadow, we had a little bit more dirt going to it, but it must have been because it's just lower and there's that creek down there. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I also think as you go out west or you go where you're going to have more drought, I think you pay more attention to where the water will drain into. Yeah. So utilizing the natural run of, of the moisture yeah. is where you want to look at putting your plots. He, he, yeah, he, especially you know I mean? realizing now, like out west, how big it is a deal to have water rights. Well, right. Yeah. It's a huge wow. deal out here. Like right. back in Illinois, we didn't think about it because, I mean, every, every the soil is Well, awesome. hoppies, there's no issue. Oh, no. Right. Right. You know, no. without water. I mean, everywhere you step, it's water. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Their right. water table is like six inches under the ground. <laughs> but, but uh, no, no, but, you know, I, I think paying attention to the terrain. <laughs> you know, because we love to get them where it's high up, high up somewhere, dry, you know, a lot of sun. Mm-hmm. But you may have the moisture may get sucked in the ground so quick there, yeah. where if you look where, you know, contours down and you have maybe you it holds a little more moisture in the ground, you might get better planting. Yeah. And you can actually tell that like right now and in the middle summers when... Oh. Everything in the top hills are dry, 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 but yeah. down low, all of a sudden, there's this green patch. Just, yeah, and you're like, that's green. where we should have planted because we've done that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes what mom just said, you know, real simple, is maybe just don't jump into planting right away. The first year. Mm-hmm. Learn See the area. You, you, you know what yeah. I mean? Look at the contours of the land and try to find where those moisture spots are. Rather than and let's face it, and possibly one of, wasting your money. Yeah. Yep, and time. And time. You know, I sh- and the other big thing is, you know, you've got you've got the plant, you've got clovers and these other plants that put more nitrogen in the ground, so it saves on fertilizer. Mm-hmm. The other thing, a lot of you know, the, your your clovers hold tight because of the root system. So when it holds tight, it w- you know will stop a lot of washout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's another so good keep your advantage. So together, even that much better. Yes. Yeah. So so there's yeah. a lot of little variables, but I think you know. Give it some time, learn the area, you know, and just mm-hmm. make it happen. Yes, sir. Cool. All right, so we're going to switch topics kind of. Oh, okay. We're going to spin. Okay. We're going yeah, to take a spin. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're, we're, we're done with the plots for it. Yeah. Oh, just, okay. Right. Well, for the po- this I, podcast. Yeah, I think this, that was the last question, mm-hmm. but that's okay. All right, so when should I start putting up tree stands? Oh, okay. And the follow-up to that will be when should you start putting up pop-ups? Because that's oh, a lot of people will pop it up Brown the same blinds. day, but I know, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm saying. I mean, your hard blinds usually will put up, of course, before. Right, mm-hmm. right. They're not as easy to pop up, but depending on the hunt, as well for pop ups, I know we usually set them up as yeah. early as we can because yeah. then the animals get used to it. Right, and it depends on if there's other animals around. Yes. If there's cattle around, you're gonna have to do something because they are gonna destroy you're your pop up. You're gonna I mean, have to no put doubt. fence mm-hmm. posts and wire it. And wire it. You know, yeah. just like we do out west, or you and know, out mountain. in the prairies with. Well, well, with the have, antelope, yep. mm-hmm. you know, you've got to stop the, the cattle from destroying them because they'll yep. come up, rub on them, break the hubs or the poles, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Get their heads stuck in it, destroy it. <laughs> you, know, know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, I don't think there's any, you know, set time. Mm-hmm. If you pattern the animals and you know when you're going to hunt those animals, you know, getting your stands in ample enough time so they're used to it, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's just another object that they maybe have never seen there. Yeah, they'll be wary um, of it at first. Right. Yep. 
you know, utilize whatever covers from the trees. Don't yeah. trim, don't cut your trees so they look like a telephone pole. You, right. you, know, yeah. no, you need to keep some of the cover. Yeah. Bring yeah. up the silhouette yeah. as well on your body. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and the other thing too is if you're going to let them sit for a couple of years, at the end of season, go in and loosen your straps because as the trees expand, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? The, and you've seen it. We've done. I've oh, done it multiple it times, times where the strap grows into the, the tree, tree or the tree stand grab, grows into the tree. Mm -hmm. And then you're shot. Then it's no good. Mm -hmm. Then it's very unsafe, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the other thing there is, you know, just if you're going to let them sit, loosen them up, make a note. Just so you when you, you, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we forget pin it right to the stand or, or whatever, say, hey, yeah, all the straps are lot, you know, loose. Yeah. So when, as you're going up, you tighten it. And then again, you got your hunter safety system, so you're mm -hmm. attached. So you're always safe. Yeah. Um, you know, your lifelines, always check all that stuff if you're going to let them sit for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, that sun beats up, beats a lot of stuff up. It does. It, does. Yeah. it dries it out. It makes it, you know, yeah, rot you or whatever. Check yep. for dry rot and everything yep. on your straps. Right. So, I mean, you're going to... You, like after the winter, a lot of times, like in the winter time, we can see the trails where the deer are at, where yep. they're wintering, you know, mm -hmm. back in Illinois, say. Mm -hmm. Here, it's been a little bit different because everything changes around here. We're still yeah. learning here. But the thing is, is that you, if you're hunting the same land that you were last year, or you've hunted it before, and you kind of know where the, those deer trails are at, if you left your tree stand up, like, like Dad just said, you know, go ahead and double check them, make sure everything's good. You're going to want to wait just a little bit longer, though, before doing your trimming because mm -hmm. the leaves are going to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so up here, we're just starting to get leaves. I'm sure Illinois is green and popping with plenty of <laughs> leaves and branches yeah. and everything else everywhere. So, I mean, you're going to, I mean, it's almost June, though. I guess that's usually July is when we would start going and really looking at our tree stand setups, wouldn't mm -hmm. we, in, in, in Illinois? Oh, yeah. Because then you can go ahead and you can make sure that things are trimmed. And if all of a sudden that poison oak vibe ivy decides Ooh. to go up mm -hmm. the tree, you can go ahead and chop it off before the fall comes and yeah. get it, you know. And of course, wear gloves and don't inhale it. Don't burn yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Either. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't burn, burn it. it. Don't. You know, poison ivy is kind of a gross thing. We yeah, we've do done all of it. Yeah. We've These done it all. Really good oh, at burning, so funny. cutting the whole grabbing. nine yards, grabbing, and then I mean, the one year RJ had to go get shots. Oh, I mean, it's it, actually, Ralph has gotten shots numerous times. <laughs> We haven't found it up here yet, though, in Colorado. Well, That's we'll find good. something. I'm rattlesnakes sure or whatever. Something, yeah, something we do else. Have rattlesnakes. But I think the thing is, is that when you're setting up your tree stand, you want to make sure that you're setting it up towards the right way you want to. Now, last fall, you two are lefties, mm -hmm. us two are righties mm -hmm. when we shoot in our bows, you know. So you got to keep all of that Everything. into yep. consideration oh, yeah. also because I know there was like one or two stands that when Aubrey was trying to hunt, yeah, it was going to be a little awkward. Gonna... Yep. <laughs> is it just because RJ's, or just because Aubrey's awkward, though? Oh. Is that why? I'm going to take the fifth on that. Yeah, smart. <laughs> um, ground blinds, I'm a big fan in, in getting them up as soon as possible, you know, in advance mm -hmm. before you hunt. Turkeys, not so much, but, you know, elk, deer, and everything yeah, else. Because they're so observant. Not that yes. turkeys aren't, well, but... The right. huge, to me, the biggest thing are those sides and the roof. Mm -hmm. You could see that from across the mountain. Mm -hmm. So brush it in. Get you know yep. break those flat surf. It's it's like putting a billboard up in the middle of the woods. Yep. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Take so, some limbs and leaves. And yes. Brush. Break it up. Brush it up. Um, you and know. One of the things that we've done too is we've taken whether it's a broom or something, some kind of a yep, stick support because the center and support hub. the center hub. Because yeah. what's going to yeah. happen is if you do try to cover up that top. You know, so it's not just such a flat, shiny yeah. piece. If you try to cover it up with branches and stuff and then it rains and it gets heavier, it's going to pop in yep. and there's a good chance it's going to hold water and mess up your blind. Yep. You know, so you want to make sure that you kind of somehow or another keep that up mm -hmm. so that it doesn't fall down. You know, and the other thing that, w that we really helped us it through all the years was you get old carpet, you get old yes. rugs, mm -hmm. just don't yes. throw them out. Yeah. Literally cut cut the big pieces of carpet or whatever to fit in these ground blinds and roll it up and take it in and out with you because you don't want to leave it in there moisture and everything. But when you can quiet that floor up, especially here in this dry climate, yeah, it, you, where everything's mm -hmm. crunchy. Yep. Yeah. You know, so keep the old throw rugs or keep the you know keep the old and pieces spray of them carpet. down. Don't you yeah. know? Don't take it out of the house and you have a dog or something like that. Yeah. Spray it down with some sunaway spray. Let you know, it let it air for out outside a for a days bit. Or a right. Or Absolutely. And then when you're ready, go ahead, roll it up and take it out with you. Put it in there. Put your chairs in there, and you're ready to go. <laughs> but brush them. Yeah, brush them. Get rid of that roof outline in the sides. All right. Sticking with tree stands and ground blinds. Yes. What uh, what do you what do you recommend to keep them in good condition? 
to like your maintenance every year to keep them up to make sure everything's good. Like you were saying before of twister traps, make sure they're not dry rotted, take them, loosen them off the tree a little bit, but like ground blinds. And, and honestly, for the tree stand stuff, if you have a place to store them, you really should probably take them down yes. every mm -hmm. year and store them away. Some people just don't have the room to store them. Yeah. And if you're going to keep them outside, you know, you might as well leave them set up, huh? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, no, oh. no, I mean, <laughs> but, but the, no, no, the other thing too is again, like we said, sun, the seats yes. and all those things, you've got to be yeah. careful, you've got to always yeah. be aware of that, you know, let, mom's right, take them down, problem is, is most of us don't take them down, we leave them up, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but the other thing too is your blinds, when you take them down, put them in a the garage, set up. Yeah. Let them dry inside as well as outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of mold and mildew will, will be formed. Because it never fails. The day that you decide you're going to go out and take down blinds, because you're mm -hmm. not going to leave those up all year, mm -hmm. it it's going to rain. Yeah. Or it's going to oh, snow. Or snow. Yeah. And then you take it back and you fold it up. All the, you know, you fold all the hubs back in, you know, mm -hmm. and then you put it in the bag and you put it in the garage all and you totally forget about it. Yep. You need to open it up. It's almost like when you go camping. You go camping. You clean up because it's raining the last day. You throw everything in there. You throw it, in, and the next time you want to camp, it's moldy. No, you don't. You need to air that puppy out. And I know I'm um, OCD, whatever you call that, yes. right? But when the blinds, when you pop up the blinds inside, put all, close all the windows, bring all the screens up, yeah. get everything set up for yeah. next year, and then season. close it all once it's yeah. all dry. Then you put it back in the bag or drag open yep. or anything like that. Yep. Right. And again, back to the whole tree stand thing. Mm -hmm. One of the key things about the tree stands, whether you're taking them down every year or you're leaving them up, is being connected from the ground up. Yeah. Have a lifeline on there. Have your hunter safety yeah. systems on there. Have some kind of harness because it doesn't matter whether it's a brand new setup that you're putting up or mm -hmm. if it's been up for a year or you took it down. Have that harness line back in there that was it 80% of the tree stand accidents happen in and out in and out of the tree stand. It's Whether not you're climbing, climbing up it's not climbing or you're stepping up. into yes. or stepping out of. You, you would know. think it was falling asleep, but yeah. it's not. It's no. not. It's stepping into or out of. And a, and a big part of it is one, you either you slip, but the other thing is, is maybe that tree stand strap wasn't good. You mm -hmm. know, maybe it was the sun. Maybe a yep. squirrel came and chewed yep. on it or something yep. like that. And you should honestly check it every single time you get ready to get into a stand. I mean, you know what? You got green lights. You can use a green light or a red light and yep. shine your stand dark in the Make morning sure before you get tight, in at season. Make sure everything's up. good. Yep. Right, yeah. You so. know, and the other thing, too, is, you know, at the end of the season, hang up your harness. Yeah. Take a hanger, hang it up, put your rope on there, and keep it stored away. Yep. Don't leave it, you know what I mean? Don't leave it hanging outside. Right? Just take care of it because at the end of the day, that tool, that piece of equipment will save your life. Yep. Absolutely. And even we always get every time we bring up harnesses, I don't need it. Oh, it, well, you know what? It's not about no. you. No, it, it is, but it's, it's not. Your it's your family and your friends that want to see you yep. again. So don't be so stubborn to think that I don't need this. <laughs> I mean, when you go back in the day when you and I first started hunting, it was a waistband. It was like a a car seat. Uh, I started hunting before that even. Okay, was. no, I know, but <laughs> when I started hunting, it was just it was just it was like a car seat. Um, yeah. Seat belt mm -hmm. with a strap on it, and that was it. That was it. That would hurt. That was it. Well, that's I mean, what it they figured out. Was it? it would hurt. But a lot of times it actually cost worse because where it's at, oh. and your where's your weight on you your body? You would flip over. You flip over, and you're hanging, uh -huh. yep. and then all your weight goes. Yep. Oh. So that's why yeah. the whole harness is yep. really is and I mean, the only way to go. So yeah. I mean, like the guys from Hunter Safety System, they did all the research. They figured yeah. it yeah. out, and I mean that's They've incredible. Product. They were the ones that designed it. Yeah, and then they came out with a lifeline so that you know because of all the information every all the research they've done and down. Yep. going up you're and good. down you're connected and stay connected mm -hmm. awesome. and there are expiration dates on those yes make sure you yes. look yep <laughs> yes make sure they last quite a while but oh yeah they yeah. do but still again yep. inspect everything and, inspect and if everything. you fall get a new one yep because mm -hmm. seriously you, you you will put the stress and the strain yep. on that on that strap yep. and you want it to make sure it still works for you yeah. when you need it again yep. and here's the other thing that a lot of people i do not wear the same harness when I'm hanging stands as I do hunting. Because when you're hanging stands, it's normally in the hot weather. You, you know what I mean? You it's sweat. Hot, you have all your pockets and stuff. Yep, I have, we have the climbing you know, yeah. harness that I love. It's got everything in it. And you just, by the time you're up, you, you, got, you got your snips, you got your saws, you got everything mm -hmm. all right there. That's a really big plus, I, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, then we go to, and I have to bring it up because I really am a fan of the shadow. 
It's the, yeah. their lightest weight. Yep. No, it really weighs mm -hmm. hardly anything. You don't even realize it's there. No, but what, because we travel so much, and because a lot of the hunts that we go on, we're, we're going in small planes, you're very limited to weight. So yeah. put, having a harness with you 24-7 that weighs nothing. Mm -hmm. It's a lifesaver. It is. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. So so just have an arsenal of harnesses, really. <laughs> like, to, me, to me, the shadow, you know, and then yeah. your full vests. You, you're covered in your climbing vest. Yes, sir. And then moving over now to hard blinds even. Yep. Because like a lot of people, they set it up. I yep. mean, it's, it's a little bit of a process to usually set them up depending oh, yeah. on what you're doing. Yeah. Tractor, truck, trailer, yeah. whatever you need. Yeah. Yes. And then once you get it up, remember depending on your location, like we've learned is when the sun's beating down on them, it gets hot. Yeah. Yes. So you don't want to leave, like if you leave tape in there, it's probably going to melt depending on the tape or you have different items in there. Make sure you take out whatever could get ruined from either heat or cold right. as usual. Use the shades. You can buy pre-cut shades. So keep all your windows closed, you, 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 know, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, and the other thing that we're dealing with right now are the moths. That's oh, uh -huh. yeah. So if you yeah. have a blind that's open, even a ground blind hub, when you get in there, holy yeah. moly, these yeah. moths it's are everywhere. Of moths are yeah. Yeah. It's you know, bad. So just keep it all, you know, just take care of it. Yeah. And, keep them closed. And the thing too is also is um, wasps. Yeah. yeah. So when you go in there in the springtime, if you're mm -hmm. going back out Be there, careful. you've been out there all winter and you go out there, take a can of Raid with you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Take some kind of a bug spray with you because you might need it. Now, I mean, who was it that, was it Ron that had an owl? Yeah. Someone had an owl in, well, their, it, in their hard sided blind. It blew, it oh. flew it into the window, into broke, the window. broke the window, and oh. then ended up and decided to live going in there. In there. So, I mean, you know, be ready for whatever. Yeah. Oh but gosh. be prepared because something weird could happen. You know, and the other thing you brought up really <laughs> good, you know, like a lot of early season, either elk or mule deer or antelope hunts. Yeah. You're out in the prairies a lot. You know, you, you look in there before you yes, go in, in the ground look blinds. for rattlesnakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you, sure. you, you know what I mean? yeah. those blinds are going to keep the heat in there mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yep. And, cool and they're going to go in there and find somewhere Dark. warm to sleep. Yeah. Yep. So. You want to make sure of that. You want to make so sure. So there's a lot of little out. things you want to yeah. pay attention to, and that's all we're, I guess, what yeah. you're asking. So we're just it, trying so. to give you impromptu thoughts, thought process. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Appreciate it. All righty. How long before the hunt do you pack? Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> it all depends on the people. hunt. <laughs> it all depends on the hunt. <laughs> Number normal one. people, two weeks ahead, Ralph and Vicky, the, the night, night before. before. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do. Or the morning so up, depending well, on how late we're Here's what you're going to do. Especially if it's your first time going on a hunt like that, you're going to pack no less than four to six times. You will. Yeah. You're going to have create a checklist, and then you're going to start weighing everything. Go and that on, checklist I will, that. I don't need this, 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 this. You, you, you know what I mean? And in the end, you'll still bring more than you need. You yes. Guarantee. Absolutely. Here's Absolutely. what I can tell you. Early season or, or springtime, thermosel. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's everywhere we yes. go. You, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, and depending in the fall, too. Yep. Yeah. In the warmer so That's why I said states, early. We usually have a checklist. Yes. That pretty much goes nearly yeah. everywhere. That's yeah. just in case. You, know, you, you go through your optics. You go through a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, create your list. Mm -hmm. Know where you're going. Like if you're driving, oh my gosh, we bring Yeah, we everything. always overpack oh. when we're oh, we overpack yeah. everything. Always. When everything. Drive. But if you're flying, now you're limited. Right. You know, like the new cases that Easton has and, and Hoyt, the big bow trunks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We used to have the big plastic cases. You remember those? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The case alone was 12 pounds. Yeah. The case, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, 12, 20. Yeah. You, you, you know, just the case. Now you throw your bow, now you throw everything and in. And don't forget, 50 pounds is where you're supposed to be at. Yeah. You yeah. A bag when you fly. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, that's, so that brings you, you just... down to 30 pounds <laughs> right. to be able to put in there. <clears throat> right. And you so these new, really quick. Yeah. These so new bow trunks are, are great. Because they're on wheels. You can put your bow in there. You can mm -hmm. go ahead and throw clothes in there. I mean, yeah. it has all kinds of pockets. I mean, heck, you can probably it, even put a pair of hiking boots in there if you wanted to. It doesn't can. look as suspicious either. No, no it doesn't. There's not a big Love hard that. case that no. looks like a weapon So in years airport. ago, Yeah, years ago, we had the Easton one where they had the Easton cover on it before they came out with Before they redesigned it. They never even asked if it was our truck. No one golfing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no Up in the no tundra. Question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're golfing in the Yukon, oh eh? Par four. <laughs> yeah. But that, that, that's, like Dad just said, you know, you're packing. And here's the thing that, that we've done over the years, too. And we just got back from a trip. We just got back from BC. Mm -hmm. is you wear a pair of jeans. You wear that pair of jeans the entire week in camp. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't matter. You're in camp. Yeah. And you you pack one pair to wear home, clean. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Isn't that what I mean? That's oh, what yeah. we do, you know. And yep. you always take whatever you're going to wear home, put it to the side so you don't think about wearing it during the trip. Because oh, I wear it all. It. Travel oh. all week long. Yeah, we know. <laughs> That's why you come in That's... smelling. <laughs> well, I, I brought I brought two pair of underwear last trip. So yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Just, oh, gosh. <laughs> just reverse them. Exactly. Reverse them. And then reverse them again. Yeah. 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 And then turn Inside, them back. Inside, outside. Yes. I mean, it's all yeah. good. One you pair of underwear is good pair. for four days. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yuck. Yeah. Gross. Unless an accident happens. Then yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. The other thing too so. with, with your packing, like, like any stuff I'm putting in my backpack, I put little things of Ziploc bags. I keep everything lighter, ropes, you, you, know, you know what I mean? Knives. knives. Everything are in good quality. You can actually go online and buy a bag of 100 bags or 500 mm -hmm. bags of a heavy, high quality Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you keep all your gear in that because it's so much easier to pull stuff out. And it's watertight. And it's air. Yep, yeah, that's and, right. And you know, one of the things too that you have to pay attention to if you're flying somewhere mm -hmm. is if you're flying with a gun, with a rifle. So like we just went to British Columbia. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have, I had my Mountain Pro. Dad had a Mountain Pro. We had our, ex, we had our Brownings with us. So on local, domestic, United, we could have put our ammunition in that gun case and not thought a thing about it. But we checked Pacific Coast, Pacific Coastal Air, which is our flight from Vancouver to, Van to Campbell River, and the ammunition has to be separate. separate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you really need to pay attention to, if you're flying somewhere, the, regs. the regulations yeah. for yeah. it, because it just it's easier. And of mm -hmm. course, both of them, if you're going to have your ammunition in a separate bag, it has to be lockable also. Mm -hmm. So think about that. And then you have to and add two checked bags. Yes, you have in to that actually. Case. Yep. Yes, you and do. And then you're so, on a whole other problem. <laughs> right. right. And then so. be aware too of your all the paperwork, the different paperwork. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Like what's the form that so we have here? If we fly so here in the states, there through US Customs Homeland Security, yep. it's a form it's called a 4457. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's not just for rifles. It's for anything of value per se to show that it's yours before you come back into the United States. So like when we went to Canada, we had, we had to fill out the Canadian firearm form, and you have to put down your, the serial number, the barrel length, the gun, the caliper, the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. and they look at the serial number, they make sure it's fine, you, mm -hmm. they stamp it, you pay $25, and you're out the door. When you come back into the States, they're going to ask you, well, do you have paperwork on it? And you mm -hmm. can show the Canadian one, because basically you went into the country with it, yeah. but this 4457, if you have thermals, if you have expensive optics, if you have camera gear, anything like that, especially your rifles, of again, of value, you should actually take it to one of the locations. It's usually U.S. Customs Borders, Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. Take your stuff in. Let them see the serial numbers. They will stamp it, and it's your name and your passport number on there, your address on there. So then you have proof that it's yours when you come back in. And the other thing, once, because Vicky handles all the paperwork. Cause I do. He'll I suck it. at it. He'll lose it. Um, I will. But, but once you have it all in your hand, Take your phone out and take a photo of yes. each individual document. So you have that on your phone as well. And mm -hmm. you guys all laugh at me because I do. <clears throat> I become OCD when we travel. Oh. Huge OCD. Huge. We, you guys, so Aubrey, Eddie got brand new passports. You and I both got brand new passports within the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. you, I've had mine you, for a while. You have yours for a while. You look you very young. Anyways. Take copies, take color copies of your passports. Yep, just in case. And then take them with you because just in case. Mm -hmm. if, if someone steals your purse, someone steals your bag, your backpack or something like that, obviously don't keep it with the same thing where your passport's at. Mm -hmm. So you have it, but you have passport numbers and stuff. And again, like you just said, pictures on your phone. Unfortunately, I have all of your guys' passports on my phone because... <laughs> In case you guys forgot to do that, because I'm a little OCD when it comes to it, I do that. Oh, by the way, I also have all your guys' driver's licenses, which are real IDs, which you can go to yeah. Canada on. Mm -hmm. You don't need a passport to do it. But mm -hmm. anyways, yeah. Sorry, we went way over top of your know. question. On well, it's but it's another, another, good, yeah, another it's really good thing, good. though, too, is that we've started doing a little bit, is you get, like, your air tags or your those little tiles, right. the, like the little trackers. Yeah. Yeah. You throw that in your luggage or in your or backpack. Your bow case or, or in yes. everything that you have, because yep. it's... And you track $30 it. for one of them, but then you have essentially insurance that you know where that, that that's going to be at. Absolutely. At all times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little tidbits you can get out of uh, out of our little discussion, yeah. but you might have to listen to it a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Really, yes. I, I would, but, but, well, but we I mean, jump around a lot. all, we all of this okay. stuff. That's normal. So we'll, back to when we'll do we actually more. pack um, <laughs> yeah. the day before. Mm -hmm. 
We yeah. do too. Yeah. We do the same thing. Yep. We Usually. really do. Well, yeah, kind of we, we do it enough. Yeah. But if you were to ask anyone that doesn't travel like we do, right. like you take my sister, for example, and when Chrissy comes out to visit, she's packed like a week before. <laughs> you know, and if I'm going to go visit her, it's like that morning of, I'm like, wah, 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 yeah. we're yep. done. I didn't even think twice about it, mm -hmm. so. And yes, we always forget something usually. Absolutely. Yeah, last year it was too. RJ's arrows on the animal. Yeah, that he asked if I packed. And we had to turn around and, yeah. and we had to come back and get him. But I was asking. So, you know, a checklist when you pack is a good idea. Checklist. Yeah. Make Check sure you mark everything off like arrows. Yep, just Check. like Santa. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just like Santa. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Good. Okay. All right, well, this one's kind of a three parter. Okay. Oh. Yes. Three parter. You ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, do you want me to do that? Yeah, oh, I feel okay. like this is the Newlywood oh, game or something. I know, it's like, okay. <laughs> the next question is... What is your favorite is? fruit? Yeah. What is your muzzleloader preseason prep, as well as your firearm and archery? We'll start with muzzleloader. Whew. Wow. I know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a big one. You. First of all, number one for like our traditions for our muzzleloader yes. is... After season or after hunt, please make sure you clean it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you Before not try... you even worry about preseason prepping it, <laughs> it needs to be cleaned <laughs> right after season, right after that hunt, because that stuff is corrosive and you will destroy oh, yeah. it. You right. Don't want. And to our traditions are too good to. Yes. You know, uh -huh. let, let yes. get screwed up. So that yeah. I'm sorry, I just needed to preempt that. Yes. Okay. The other so. thing, again, all three of those combined checklists. Checklist mm -hmm. yep. on yep. each individual category, you, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. your muzzleloader, you need your primers, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. your, your rifles and, and your firearms, that way you need your shells, your ammo, our browning stuff there. You know, your bows, you need your arrows, your broadheads. So, yep. so to me, a checklist on each individual one, have it at your workshop or at your man cave or whatever. Mm -hmm. And also, once you have a good one, established one, take a damn photo of it. So then as you're sitting there, you know, you look at your phone and go, Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know and, what I mean? Yeah. And once you get that list together and you're starting to get things ready for a muzzle loader, rifle, archery gun, either way, preseason, shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot. Make sure the scopes practice. are on. Make practice sure you're practicing yep. muscle memory. You know, whether you're shooting your bow, your gun, your muzzle loader, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you need to keep practicing. And again, you always have to keep cleaning it then too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But and that's it, okay. Yep. It is okay. And, and when it comes to archery, one of the things, if you're going to go out and you're going to go out on a big hunt, mm -hmm. you're going to want a second string set up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. You know, you know and, and pre-stretch your original string. Once it's all d dialed in, you can take that one off. Yep. Put your new set of cables and string, you know, string on. Mm -hmm. Now get that dialed in and hunt with that one because you already know your backup is pre, everything's ready to go. Peep sights in, you know, your kisser or your knock, whatever. However you have it, your loop, everything, it's all ready to go. So, so you, you know, that in itself and do all this stuff and put it in those little Ziploc bags to keep the moisture and everything away so it's easy. You know, you run, you grab your pack you know exactly what you got. If you're carrying a flashlight, if it's not rechargeable, have an extra set of batteries yes. and flip, yep. put duct, put electrical tape on them so they don't touch and they don't fuse out. You, you know what I mean? Yep. All these little things will help you to have a much better experience and know where you're going and what you're doing because turkey season, whether it's a vest or whether it's our little, you know, Alps bag, our shoulder, then we love it so small, but what do we got in there? We got snips, we got a little folding saw, Mm -hmm. You may not need that on some other hunts, but have that checklist for those particular hunts. Like a good example, we're going up to Saskatchewan here soon. Yep. We will have a little folding saw and snips because we're going to be hunting the tundra. Small scrub brush, yeah. you, you know what I mean? No big trees, so we're sitting on the ground. So you're going to want a pair of snips or something to cut so you can sit down there, get hunkered, keep your bow up here. You, you know what I mean? There, so, so each trip may have certain things that you may not pack on each on each hunt mm -hmm. or adventure. So have that list and know, okay, I know I'm going to deal with this, I'm going to deal with this. If you're ground blind hunting, you probably don't need a harness. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. You kind of make and, your base list. Right. You have everything there. And, and then kind you of add like on additional things. Yes. Right. And one yeah. of the things you should add to your list also that you don't think about until actually you actually have to cut your tag, and I'm not talking about a knife, but a cable tie. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Throw some smaller cable ties or, or a rope so that you have it. So a lot of a lot of different states, you have to go ahead and you have to it attach to be it to the body to or yep. to the antlers. The antlers so the and a lot of times, I mean, Ralph, he'll, he'll end up dead. He'll end up taking a shoestring. Yeah, if I forget. And yeah. slice it, and then you're then you're hobbling around. So I mean, <laughs> I always so hobble. Go, good point. <laughs> yeah. 
Good point. Or if your yeah. your hoodie has one of these. Two. Yeah. 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 I'm actually well, surprised. I'm, I'm taking surprised it. Yeah. you have one. I'm, I know. Most I don't have many left. Yeah. yeah. Most of them yeah. are already out. But yeah, so I mean, like throwing like cable ties or a little bit of rope, that's a great idea. And, and the other he, thing is, is rope too. Yeah, cord, cord, parachute cord, is good parachute cord. Don't get that mm -hmm. cheap crap. Right. Yep. Was, you're going to say the same thing I was going to say about in a tent with parachute cord, with rope? No, you could dry your clothes. Yeah. Hang them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> wow. But do you want to talk about it? No, you can. You, you do. You got it. <laughs> Help me. Okay. So anyways, one of the things that we also always throw in our pack, depending on the hunt, again, Rope is always a good thing to have. You may need it to carry your bow or your rifle yeah. up into a tree stand or whatever. Mm -hmm. But also, if you're our camp, if you're out and you're staying in a tent, and sometimes even if you're staying in a cabin, yeah, you may need to. If valuable. it rains, you can go ahead and you can tie it from you know somewhere to somewhere. Or if you're in a tent, you can go from corner to corner and you hang your clothes up inside of it just so that they dry out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Socks, especially socks. Yes. Are, yeah. You need to keep your. Or you can tie your partner up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where the heck did that come from? <laughs> I, don't I don't know about that one. Okay. Uh, that one. Um, well. <laughs> it was a joke. Crying out loud. I didn't know how to take that one. So <laughs> if you're driving somewhere, if you have wet boots, you can bring like a boot dryer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you don't, if you're not driving, obviously to fly, it's going to be a little awkward and stuff like that. But one of the things you can do is it's going to sound totally crazy. If you pick up a local newspaper... You can ball the newspapers up and shove them into your boots. And it will take the, it will take the yep. moisture out of your boots. Or really? well, here's yeah. another one. You know all those little pain in the butt silica little packs yeah. you get when you, you buy everything, everything? When it ships. Yes. Stop throwing them out. Yes, yeah, start saving them. Start yeah. saving them. Okay. Put them in a sock. They're meant to hold that moisture. Yes. So then what uh, you do is you have all this crap that you always throw out. Instead, put them in a little sock. Drop them in your boots, and it'll wick away a lot of the moisture that's in those boots, there and it weighs go. nothing. And it's free because it's in every damn package yeah. that it you is. get. It's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. So there's a Maybe little you're buying too. too many packages. Maybe that's the problem. No, I think you buy them, and they come here, no. and I have to I'm open them, sure. no. and I see them all over the Why place. Why are you opening my packages? Because I can. No. No, I'm pretty I have sure your knife. packages. I have a sharp knife. Mine's sharper. I doubt it. Let's talk about traveling internationally as well. Okay. Because, of course, like you guys have brought off, which I didn't realize because I've been to New Zealand before, but they made you take your boots out yes. and wash them. Which is. It's a little bit top, but it makes sense. No, it's but a look very at that clean, country. Oh, that's what yeah. we say. It's, uh, it's a very, very, very clean country. It's beautiful. Yes. And they're, they're very meticulous on all their they are. little things like that. So. so they double check everything in New Zealand. Like when we went over there the last time, well, like you just said, boots, okay? So dad mm -hmm. had boots in his bow case. And in the bow case, he had like two little pieces of dry leaves. Dried leaves. And they the made fall, him the take, fall, yeah. they made him take a vacuum had, out his bow case. And I, I don't, that, that's fine. It is yeah, fine. No, it's it not is a I should have done that before and, and, I and left. And then the boot, yeah. boot wise going into <clears throat> New Zealand, you're better off buying a brand new pair of boots and do not walk in the mud with them and then wash them anyways. Time and out. when you Time pack out. them, put them on the top of your bag. Wear because them you before there, you get there. No, I said wear them, but not oh. in the mud. <laughs> I said wear them, but don't wear them in the mud. Yeah. Because the thing <clears> is, <throat> then pack them on the top of your bag. Seriously, because when you get First there, they're they going to say, see. what are they're you doing and where are your boots? Yep. And they take them out. Wow. And if, you know, and, and if there's any dirt whatsoever, they go and they dump them in this water and they make them soaking wet and then they give them back to you. Yeah. I mean, they'll, put, they'll give you a bag, but... <laughs> Make wow. sure they're clean. Just Ziploc sure. bags are your friend. And, and yeah. again, All there's, different a, there's a lot of different countries, though, too, that you got to be careful with what you're bringing in. So us, we're thinking, okay, well, I had packed us, like, Slim Jims or something like that for the flight over, and we still had some left over, and they're like, do you have any food on you? I, I just have snacks. Well, what kind of snacks do you have? And I take out my bag of snacks out of my, my bag, and they're like, well, you can't bring those in here. I go, I can't. And she goes, no. You can't bring Slim Jims into New Zealand, so don't bring jerky. Don't do anything oh, like that. Okay. I Just know. saying. Noted. So if you're going to pack up stuff for a trip, mm -hmm. be careful. and Don't overpack it, and you're better off just buying it there. Because you can't bring fruits, vegetables, meats, nuts, right. things like that into other countries. Well, they they, have, they, they have Vegemite, so we're good. Oh, but pay close attention yes. to those regulations. Yes. Yeah, you know, we have all sure. the paperwork um, for here. suppressors, everything, no matter yep. where you're going. Talk to your outfit or your guide or whoever you're talking to out there and make sure you know what all is legal. Right, and because you also need to pay attention to, like you just said, like when we traveled to South Africa with our bows, not an issue whatsoever. 
if you travel over there with a rifle, mm -hmm. then you need to go ahead and, and basically fill out paperwork before you leave. Way in advance. Yeah. Just and so that everything is before. right. And you need a letter from your okay. outfitter, from your professional mm -hmm. hunter, stating mm -hmm. that, yes, I'm inviting them to come into our country. You have to have all these other steps, and you really need to be careful with that. And then the other one other thing, too, is you also need to plan your airline, okay? Mm -hmm. Because there's countries in Europe that if you go through there with a rifle, even though you're not staying there, say you went from the U.S., you stopped in London, or you stopped, I'm trying to remember, there's another one, Finland, or somewhere else. There's another mm -hmm. country over there that I just read about. And then you're going to go to South Africa. Even though you're only stopping there for a layover, you're not leaving the airport, and you're going to South Africa or to another country with your rifle, mm -hmm. you have to have paperwork. You have to have gun permits. <laughs> yes, for a transfer gun permit while you're landed there. So, I mean, there's a lot of things so that do you your really, homework. really do yes. your homework. Because you do don't want to get somewhere. A couple weeks before. You, you, months. Yeah, months. months before. Months. Because then yeah. that way you don't have you any can. surprises. That's what I'm saying. Don't do it the week yeah. before. No. Travel stress, you don't want it. No. And when it comes to stuff like that, and then all of a sudden they say, well, you can't enter. And what if all of a sudden you have to go all the way back to the United States because you didn't get that one paper? And that expense out? is on you. Yeah. Absolutely. It kind of and travel is expensive now. Travel is Woo! extremely Especially expensive since right now. The pandemic. Yes. Yes. Lovely. And they're saying it's supposed to hit like pre-pandemic flight info. In fact, like soon. Like they're they're saying like there's gonna be more people traveling now than well before the pandemic. Well, it's because everybody was locked up. Yeah. Right. Now they everybody's are ready. Everywhere. Peace. Let's get be going. Free. <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> And they've stopped all the mandates. So, yes. you know, so those people that... Opening. That's that why we're back in Canada. Yes. Yeah, so babe. all those people that didn't want to get anything <clears throat> specific, they didn't have to, and now you can travel <laughs> again. So I'm just saying. Yes. Okay. I think the best best thing to how to wrap all this up is, I know we touched on a lot of pre preseason and, and, you know, traveling, is make sure you do your homework. You know, no matter where you're going, no matter what you're hunting with, check out all the legalities, talk to your, your outfitter or your PH, you know, ask, have the questions, write them down, and say, hey, do, what do I need to do here? What do I need to do there? And they're going to have your answers. Yes, yeah. Because they, they do it all they, the time. They're yeah. going to tell you the easiest way to do it. When we went to Australia, when we went over there yeah. for, for the um, Asiatic water buffalo, for a, we had, you had to go ahead, we had to do the paperwork, and it had to go through not just Australia government, but it had to go through the local... Prov provincial, provincial police yeah, department or something like that and he, they actually issued him a hard card <clears throat> id yep. with his name and stuff on it for that rifle that we had to take wow. Dang. so i mean there's there's a lot of steps to it but it's not hard it's just time consuming yeah. so just ask your outfitter your professional hunter whoever it is that you're going to go over there with exactly what you need to do so you get it done right yeah <laughs> well go and Keep a good attitude. Yes. Always. Traveling, Tra traveling, traveling sometimes cranky. sucks. Yep. It really does. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Because there's always someone cranky on the plane. Oh. Always. Oh. It's yeah. usually, I mean. I sort of go to sleep. So he I does. Yeah, you he sleep does. a lot. Of no. He the, sleeps. It, and the other thing you, you've got to remember is those people behind the counters have been there. Yes. And they hear all the reasonings, the excuses. Mm -hmm. So sometimes being nice will get you yes. a lot further Be kind. than being yeah. a, a rotten yeah. SOB. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Enough. Well, to sum everything up, make sure you guys check out, talk to the outfitters, make sure you know all the legalities, regulations, right. everything yes. else. As far as plots go, get them in, do your, do your research. Sorry, yep. Do your research first. Make sure, take your time, understand the land that you'll be hunting, that you'll be planting in, and then... That's when you make your next move into actually right. planting and making your better habitat and right. understanding your your area. Right. Correct. And then, of course, tree stands, ground blinds, set them up as soon as you can, right. wherever you're at. Know, know how you want to set them up, whether it's you have your ground blind, it's a, it's a pop-up, you set it up a couple weeks before, brush it in, make sure if you're going to get heavy rains, you have your... Stick in the middle or whatever you're going to use in the middle. Keep right. holding it up. And just to, I mean, to sum everything up, well, make, yeah. sure, make sure you do your research yes. and take On care everything. of everything and, you do. Right. And even with your tree, whether your tree stands, your ground blinds, fit, you know, make a note when you think you're going to be there most of the time. Mm -hmm. And set them up with the sun in your favor, not against you, not shining on you, not coming into the blind. And, of course, the wind. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're prevailing mm -hmm. winds all the time. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But, but you know, those little tips will go a long ways and, and you know, make that next adventure awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and just something else to throw in there, because I know oh. we've been doing this a lot, is 
we love to be able to see through the blinds, like the 360 blinds where you can see through them. But to your but, point that you always bring is get either black, black material felt, or maybe a darker camo or something, just like a felt material, pin it up behind you. Yes. yes. To break so, up your silhouette. Because what happens, you got to remember, when you can see out, they okay? can see it. And if you got light coming in they're somehow, gonna, some way, they're gonna see movement. Mm -hmm. they can see movement. Yep. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of having at least two sides all black. So mm -hmm. then we're sitting further back into the you blind. Into that little yep. dark yep. spot. Yep. yep. And it's real simple. You can roll that little black felt up. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can even use the landscaping black stuff that's real lightweight. Pin it, we, we carry, always carry the little, the little clamps, clamps, the plastic, yeah. you buy a bucket of them for oh, yeah. 20 bucks or 10 yeah. bucks, you clamp them up there and you're set. Yep. Yep. All these little details will truly help you to have a better adventure. Absolutely. Well, I think that wraps us up. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. That Thank you quick. guys. Was. Sure. Yes. It was a shorter one, but it was. No, I'm sure. It was a lot of good information though. Yeah. Yes. And if we, if you have any questions after this, throw them in the comments, throw them wherever you want to. This will be on YouTube. Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, all, all of them. Um, so wherever you're listening to this at, just shoot us a message. Of course, also on... Subscribe. Social, yes, subscribe, please, <laughs> to social pages. That was pretty at, good of him. I know, oh, right? Yes, you good job. Woo! Good job. Uh, subscribe to... Uh, no, subscribe now. <laughs> Go check them out, my mom and dad, on social media at Ralph and Vicky and us at RJ and Aubrey. And uh, thank you guys for watching. So Thanks. this was the Choice Podcast.